Hey you guys, how's it going? It's a height here, and we're back with a brand new first look to the channel. This game is called The Joy of Programming, and it is a software engineering simulator. Um, and there seems to be a lot of excitement right now on my channel regarding um The Farmer Was Replaced, which is a Python-based game for farming. And this game is a Python-based game to make factories from what I can tell and I love me some factories so we're gonna give it a go <laughs> we're gonna give it a go and see how it works now it seems like I'm at a digital PC on Steam buying the game click to play yeah we want to do that all right so now we're playing the game inside of the game what do we got here start game play scenario start game I don't actually know what the heck it is I'm doing. So hopefully there's a tutorial. Within the code editor, mouse hover over any keyword to see a tooltip pop up. Oh boy. I might be biting off more than I can chew here. Pan the camera with WASD. Move the mouse to the edge of the screen. Rotate the camera. Hold the right mouse. Zoom in and out. Okay. Click the delivery container. Open the delivery door. Open door. Open underscore door. Oh, container dot open door. Ah, okay. So we're already starting to code, I guess. Container dot open door. Click the conveyor belt. Increase the belt speed to greater than zero. Um, how do I actually... Oh, set? Okay. Set target speed. Oh my gosh. I I might be making a huge mistake with this game, but we're going to figure it out. Close the door. Okay, close the door. There we go. So far, so good. Deliver the box. We've done that. Um, I think, right? We've we've done that. How do I Hello? Deliver. Okay. <laughs> Oh my gosh, there we go. We did the first level. That was easy. Easy. I think we're going to be on a roll. How much harder could it possibly get? Okay. Let's go to the next level. Indentation in Python is used to scope code blocks. For example, all code that should be executed if some condition is true must be indented under the corresponding if clause. That makes sense. Uh... Are, are we doing the same thing? Oh, open the code window. Welcome to your first Python scripts. Can I make this bigger? Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is it like a font size? No, maybe. Nope, I guess that's it. Welcome to your first Python script. This line starts with a hash, meaning it is a comment. Python ignores comments. Okay, the next two lines of code are always required, but can be ignored for the time being. From PyJop import. No idea what that means. <laughs> but it said we can ignore it. So we're going to ignore it. Variable pointing to the conveyor belt. Conveyor equals conveyor belt dot find. Okay. I think that makes sense. Oh god. Guys, I'm making a mistake. This is going to be way too hard. Whoa. What am I doing? What am I doing? I don't want to edit the code. No, 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 no. Okay. Ooh, -wee, that was close. Set the speed of the conveyor belt. Positive. What am I doing? Read the code and try to see that it will repeat the steps you executed manually in the first tutorial. Well, perfectly fine. If you do not understand all the details yet, run the code once you're ready. Okay. Conveyor belt equals. So we're setting that equal to the conveyor belt. Then we're setting the target speed. Container equals deliver container dot final. Oh, dot find. Okay, that makes sense. Container dot open door. Container dot close door. Sleep. Container deliver. Okay, let's do it. Let's go. Init Python. The door opens. Things do their thing. Sleep. After 18 seconds, the barrel should have arrived. Okay. Oh, and it tells us how much memory we're using. The tick rate interesting 
Closing the door. Delivering the barrel. Absolutely wonderful. After seven seconds, right? There we go. Oh, that one was easy. All I had to do was push play. Let's go. One more time. One more time. Using control Z, control Y, you can undo, redo. Understood. The conveyor belt. Print hello world. The infamous hello world program in Python prints hello world onto the screen. Yeah, that's it. Sorry. Okay. How do we skip this stuff? We understand print. Print does exactly what it implies. We call or invoke a function. Inside we can write a literal string to be printed. We need to surround it with quotation marks. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on. Like hello world. Okay. Or we could also print the contact contents of a variable we omit the quotation marks in this case okay or we could put a number the same concept applies to other functions as well though they might have different and more parameters happy coding uh how do we how do we go there we go what am i doing change the code to set the conveyor target speed greater to z greater than zero um conveyor set target speed we want it to be greater than zero one how's that is one good i think we did it hello world float wait for the barrel to drop on the floor i should have made this faster <laughs> oh no now we have to wait for it can i zoom while we're in this menu here we go, barrel. Here we go. Come on. You can do it, barrel. Yes, barrel. You've done it. Perfect. Next level. We're so smart. You know? Okay, click on the line number in the code to set a breakpoint, then click debug instead of run, and the code will stop at each breakpoint. Inspect variables with mouse hover. Click on the code to set a breakpoint. For loops. Let's say you want to sum up numbers 1 to 99 and using gob simulate sim summation is not allowed. I don't know what the heck that means, but continue. The above code is a bad idea. Lots of typing, error prone, and not reusable. True. S equals zero for I in range 100. S plus equals I. Whenever you need to execute something repeatedly, using a loop is one way to go about it. This is a for loop that runs exactly 100 times. I indicates the current iteration number 0 to 99. Inside, note the indentation. We increment our current value of S by the current value of I. Yep, that makes sense. Let's watch it go. Wow. Okay, I don't want to watch this forever. Let's let's pick this up a little bit. Happy coding. Okay, what am I doing? Try the time control buttons in the lower right corner to reset, speed up, or slow down the simulation. Okay. You speed up, slow down, or pause. Speed up. Oh, we also it tells us how to do it. Sim Envir Manager dot first. Okay. Sim Envir Manager set time dilation. What is happening? Why are these boxes? I wasn't watching what was going on, on my screen. <laughs> There's just boxes everywhere. What? Oh, are they being created out of that thing? Okay, uh, reset, 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 reset. Use the slowdown or pause. Pause. Open the perks menu? <gasps> There's perks. Enable the use of if, elif, else. Branching construction in all of your Python. Highly recommended. I don't know how you could go without if statements. It's like the only thing I use. <laughs> okay, unlock the Python 4. There we go. We got a nice tire fire going and we need to burn some stuff. 
add one line of Python code within the for loop to start all conveyor belts to move the spawn boxes. Hang on. To move the spawn boxes along the conveyor line, burn five boxes. Okay. Uh, what am I doing? We need to add one line of Python code to start all conveyor belts to move the spawn boxes along the conveyor line. All cons equals conveyor belt dot find all. Oh, man, this is really interesting. Okay, so we need to add one set target speed of each conveyor belt. Okay, it's got to go right in here and we probably want all cons dot was it set speed i forget uh oh hang on i think we can cheat right current speed if speed first get current speed i don't want that set target speed here we go set target speed wait is it dot set yeah dot set underscore target underscore speed okay set underscore target underscore speed did it say what to set this to it just says to get them moving let's go like three this time one was way too slow okay well let's give it a go and see if that works i might have made a mistake uh oh what what happened object no attribute set target speed oh i am so stupid all cons is like a group of conveyor belts and then this is a for loop that's picking each one individually so i think i just need to do this for each conveyor in all conveyors we are going to set the conveyor oh i set that to the wrong one conveyor dot set target speed okay that should work now i hope maybe uh, there we go it's working just like that we've done the thing now we need to burn five boxes so let's speed things up a bit i should have set that speed faster look at that we got a nice tire fire he wasn't even kidding when he said tire fire why is there a tire fire in the middle of this factory <laughs> okay it's fine it's fine we're burning some boxes why 89.8 how in the heck did that work? It should have been 80%, right? 89.8, what happened? Oh, maybe all these things counted as steps as well. All right, we're getting there. This is gonna be painful. I apologize in advance. Within the code editor, mouse hover. Okay, we've already done that. If conditionals, yes, yes, yes. Let's get going import random a equals random dot random oh my god if a is less than 0.5 print heads else print tails let's check how okay let's see what this does we draw a continuous uniform random number between 0 and 1 if a is less than 0.5 Branch the code execution. Print heads. Print tails. Wow, would you just look at it? 0 0.1. Heads. Okay. These are cool animations just to help it kind of explain what is going on. I actually really like that. That's great. 0 0.7. Tails. How lovely. Okay, I get the rest of it. I, I I understand. We don't need to keep watching. Happy coding. There we go. Unlock Python if. Perks. Let's get ifs. And now what are we doing? Select the laser range finder. What the heck? What? What is this? Hello? New fact sheet collected? Godel's incompleteness theorem is a groundbreaking result in the field of mathematical logic, which states that there will always be certain statements that cannot be proven within a given formal system of mathematics. In other words, 
No matter how comprehensive and well-defined a system of mathematics may be, there will always be some true statements that are beyond its reach. This has far-reaching implications for our understanding of mathematics and the nature of truth itself, and has sparked much philo philosophical debate and contemplation over the years. At its heart, Gödel's incompleteness theorem tells us that there are limits to what we can what we can know and prove, and that our understanding of the world is necessarily incomplete. It is a deeply humbling result which forces us to confront the fundamental uncertainty and mystery at the heart of all human knowledge. I feel like I'm in school right now. I'm <laughs> just getting learned. Okay, let's see here. RFID tag box. Returns RFID tag of the entity currently hit by this rangefinder. Okay, so now we can start sorting things. Mouse over RFID tag. Whoops, I... Okay, move five barrels to the container on the right. Move five boxes to the container on the left. RFID, RFID tag box. It's a box. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. How am I supposed to do this? Um. Oh, we're just going to have to get right into it here. We're going to have to just get right into it. Hints, use variable conv to control entity conveyor belt. Good, it's already set for us, so I don't have to worry about it. Um, the scanner is already set for us, so that's great. Now, how do I actually scan things? Scanner equals rangefinder.first. Tag equals scanner.getRFID tag. Okay, so that is the thing we have to call. Oh, and they've already done it for us right here. Okay, so then if the tag is box, set the conveyor's target speed backwards. Okay, if tag equals, come on, equals equals box. Is it box with a capital? Yes, it is. Then we want to make conveyor dot set target speed equal to minus two. Um, do I need colons in this in this game? I'm not sure. How do I go back to that? Is that just a Python thing in general? Yes, it seems like it is. Okay. I don't know much about coding, but I'm trying my hardest. So let's see. We need this in here. And then else, else we want to set the conveyor speed equal to my uh, plus two, right? Plus two. Bingo. Oh, I guess I should have put that after this just for consistency. Alrighty, there we go. Else take is empty. Oh, L if. This is supposed to be L if. L if the tag is barrel. L if tag equals equals. I just figured if it wasn't a box, then I could go the other way and it wouldn't make a difference, but they don't want me to do that. So, okay. And then in here, oh, this is not right. There we go. And then in here, else, why does it keep going backwards? I don't want it to indent like that. Okay. Conveyor dot set target speed zero okay is that all we have to do use variable use variable i think that's all we have to do hopefully it doesn't break okay we got the boxes coming through hang on can i like close this we got the boxes coming through let's speed this up a bit we got a barrel this is so cool I love it. Oh man, this is making me happy. Ta-da! Wow, we're so smart. Okay, that's amazing. Next. This is fun! Click machines in the 3D view to see details about their sensors and actuators. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, we got boxes raining from the sky. In this tutorial, you need to combine what you learned from the previous two tutorials by combining a for loop and an if conditional. 
Drop off the boxes in front or behind of the conveyor belts. You may activate at most two conveyor belts. Drop off the boxes in front or behind of the conveyor belts. So all I got to do is get these things on the ground. Entity conveyor two, entity conveyor three, entity conveyor four, entity conveyor five. So let's just set speed. Can I just do it like this or does this... I don't even need to code anything. I got the UI to help me out. All right, let's make this faster. At most two conveyor belts. Well, there we go. Uh, what? Was it coding for me? I don't understand. It was, I was supposed to be combining things. <laughs> I don't understand. I didn't have to do anything. Stuck with some coding problems? Solve it like the best programmers do. Google it. <laughs> That's totally true, I think. Three sorter. What in the heck is going on here? You need to move items of three different categories along these conveyor belts to their correct destination. Only the first item spawns automatically. After that, you need to decide when to spawn in the next item using the object spawner. Deliver eight items to their corresponding destinations. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. So we got to figure out which way is which on this thing. Negative is that way. Perfect. Let's set that back to... Uh, you know what? Let's just leave it for now. Negative is that way. This one can just always be forward, I think. Why would I ever need to change it? So let's do that. And this one can always be forward. So let's do that. And actually, I think this one can always be forward too. There we go. So those, oh, I forgot to hit set. So there we go. Those things are all working. Now, is this negative also left? Yes. Okay, so let's... Set that back to zero for now. We'll set this one back to zero for now. And what we want to do, I think, is... Well, we got to open up our code. And we're going to have to do something with this thing. I got no idea what the heck they're doing in here with simenvironment.connect. Envir equals sim manager dot first. I don't know what any of this stuff means. We'll just ignore it. <laughs> we'll just ignore it for now. For example, get current time. Okay, I think. Where do I need to run this? I think I need to run my actual code in here. Well, sim environment dot run main. I think I need to run it in here. That's what we're gonna try anyway. So the first thing we need to do is set, I guess, scanners. We have to find both of the scanners. So let's do this. Let's go um, scan. Oh, scan one. Wait, are these already things? Find scan zero. Is this one scan one? Find scan one. Okay, so I think we have to set these things as variables, even though it says like they already are. Uh, scan one equals. I don't know if this is right. Find range range finder. Yeah, range finder dot find scan one. Does that work? And then we need scan zero equals rangefinder. Hopefully this works. Dot find scan zero. So we'll give that a go. Can I just run this? See if it's going to work for us. Or if it's going to give me an error. Rangefinder dot find. Name scan zero is not defined. 
Oh, do these have to be in quotes? Because it's a name? I actually don't know. Hang on, can I click on one of these, please? It said I could... Yeah, 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 scan zero. Fine, scan zero. Okay, so that should work now. Okay, so we found them. That's perfect. Now, what we need to do is stop this because it's... we don't need it anymore. Or not right now. What is this one? Find belt one. So, conveyor one equals... Um, find belt one. Conveyor belt dot find. Okay. And then, what's this guy over here called? Conveyor belt four. And I think we're actually just going to call this zero just for simplicity and one. And I don't know if this is actually smart or not. Conveyor belt dot find. And we'll set this one equal to belt four. Like that. So we got a zero and a one and a zero and a one. And then is this actually zero? Yes. Okay. So zero and zero go together. And one and one go together okay so now we got to find out what the tag is and tag is like scan zero dot uh get rfid tag i don't know if i like tag like object object oh no that is something you don't want to use in Python. I forgot about that. Okay, we'll go tag. So tag is going to equal whatever this RFID thing says that it equals. And then if tag equals, what is this thing called? Uh, barrel? I think barrel equals barrel. Then we're going to set the conveyor belt speed of zero uh, dot set target speed. We'll set it to negative two. And then if it's not L if box L if let's go tag equals box. And I need a colon L if tag equals box. like this then we're going to set the speed equal to positive two and then also l if i probably don't need this we could just go right if it's not going left but we'll keep it simple we'll do the same thing we did last time i gotta make sure i get this right is this trigger zone cone how did I get outside? One second, cone. How in the heck did I get outside? Okay, <laughs> there we go. Else if take equals cone, and then else. And I am missing colons again. There we go. Else will set the speed equal to zero. And that should work. Then we're gonna want to wait for a certain amount of time and I can't remember how it was doing that wait a wait uh, Pause I don't know what the function was. I don't think it's a wait Does it tell me anything about this a wait Doesn't look like it I realized that this isn't actually gonna work because as soon as the item gets beyond the laser The laser is gonna turn off so I don't really want this. I don't think. I'm pretty sure I don't want that. That is bad news bears. Okay, and I should set this equal to take zero. I'm just trying to figure out the best way to do this. We're probably gonna need this same kind of thing down here. And we'll set this equal to tag one. And all of this is not indented properly. What? What is going on here? Tag one will equal that. Why is this red? Oh, because this is supposed to have an else. I don't really need an else, do I? I don't know why this is red. Anyway, we're not going to have any barrels here, so we don't need barrel. We can set this to box. 
if tag equals box, then we're going to go minus. And then if tag equals cone, we are going to go plus. And I don't need this because there is nothing else. It's just those two things. Okay, so now this code should work. The only thing I need to do is determine how often to spawn things and set a way of doing that. So this guy, spawner, I should just have a thing that calls spawner. Spawner equals object spawner dot find. And what is this thing called? Spawner. Of course, spawner. Okay, so now we've got a spawner, both of the scanners. Now what I need to do is get is get a timer somehow going. I don't know how to set up a timer. I guess I could make something up. I could just be like, um, current time equals sim time. And then, um, while, what do I want to do? Well, sim time minus Whoa, sim time minus current time. I don't think this is actually very great. <laughs> but I don't know how to do this otherwise. So, well, sim time minus current time is less than 10 seconds. I don't know if that's what I'm going to get back, but we'll try it. Is less than 10. What do I want to do? Do nothing. Wait. I wish this was a thing. I don't know why wait does not pop. Wait. I'll wait. Pause. While. How. Okay, okay. Guys. I think... Google help me. Time. Dot. Sleep. And this is how long we're going to pause for, essentially. Time dot sleep. Now, I don't think that's enough time. Maybe we want 10 seconds. And I don't know if I actually want it there. Where do I want this, actually? I think I want that at the end of the code. Does this code repeat itself? This... Oh, yeah, it does. Wow. Okay, so this whole thing is just going to keep repeating. So I probably want this at the end. And then in here somewhere, we can go spawner dot spawn, right? I think that's going to spawn. Then the tags are going to do their thing. And then they're going to go to sleep. I don't know if that works. I think that's going to break things, but let's try it. We'll give it a go. Uh oh, time is not defined. What does that mean? Google told me I didn't have to define it. <laughs> Google told me I can just... Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. From Python import or PyJob. Always required. I think if I want this to work, and I probably don't need to do this. I think I need to import time. Import time. Does that work? Google said I need to import time, but I don't know where I need to do that. Your code imports modules. You have not unlocked time. Oh. So I think that's right. I'm just trying to get too far ahead of myself. So Google is too smart for my current unlocks. So maybe I don't even need to do the automated spawning. You know, maybe what I can do, let's restart this. Maybe what I can do is just run my code and automatically spawn more stuff when the time is right. Oh no, I, oh, I got to set all these other stupid conveyor belts to proper speed. Hang on, we got to go back to our other code. So I need more conveyor belts then which is unfortunate. 
But at least those will be easy. We're just going to do conveyor belt. Well, see, now the problem is all my numbering is going to be all messed up. So I probably shouldn't have done what I did. But it's too late now. No going back. I'm just going to say it. Don't ever, ever, ever do what I'm doing right now. Because if you have to go back in the future, which luckily I don't think I'm going to have to go back to this in the future. But if you did have to go back in the future, you would have absolutely no idea what the heck you were doing. And yeah, you'd have to start over. So <laughs> anyway, what am I doing here? We got belt one, zero, two. I need a three in there somewhere. Okay, perfect. So now we got to set conversion uh conveyor two three and four all equal to positive conveyor belt i wish i could do this before i run my while loop you know i probably can does that happen in here create reference to entities main loop to retrieve data i don't know if this oh i can't if i do it after I don't feel like I want to, in my while loop, keep setting these things equal to two, but I don't know I have a better way to do it right now, so. So we're going to take this, and we're going to put it up here. Keep it nice and tidy. All of these are going to go up here, conveyor belt. Two. These are just always going to be on conveyor belt. I don't know why it keeps indenting stuff. Conveyor belt three. And conveyor belt four. Please stop indenting. Okay. Now if I was to restart this and push play. And close this and try to get back in here. Okay. Everything's working. Once this thought, once this guy gets to where he's supposed to go, I can spawn a new one. So let's just wait for a second. Bingo. We spawn a new one. That guy should start going the other way. Oh, it's working. It's not automated because I don't know how to deal with the whole time thing. <laughs> but we'll figure it out. Maybe next one. We just got to get all this working another pylon easy peasy now see the problem is this conveyor belt here is not working and that is not that is not great rangefinder scan why are you not working see it doesn't like this it's still giving me an error or an underline and i'm not sure why it's just not satisfied with whatever the heck I'm doing over here. Oh, I just figured it out. I was overriding my wrong conveyor belt. This is supposed to be set to conveyor one. Okay, I think that's going to work now. Like, can I reset this? And set the speed to super fast. Hit play. All right, I think that should get us going now we're going to need to respawn there we go things are working every time we get a box off of there we can get a new one why is it just boxes every time oh there we go we got a cone uh oh uh oh that was wrong what's going on did i set the wrong i think i toggled the wrong thing in here tag zero hang on stop Stop everything. This is supposed to be scan one. Derp. That's what happens when you copy and paste your code, guys. You gotta be careful with that. You gotta be careful with that. Okay, let's give it one more go. This should work now. I'm hoping everything works appropriately. That looks good. Now we get a bonus if we can beat it in under the amount of time required. We've got 34 seconds left to beat it. What? How? I broke. Things are not going the right way. Still. Which is disappointing. <laughs> but we beat it. So that 
is pretty good. Don't do any incorrect deliveries. I'm not sure how my deliveries went wrong, but I can't look at my code now. All right, let's finish that level off. Um, time beats. We beat 56% of people, is that what that means? Lines of code beats 53%, memory beats 15%. What's CMD's sent? Commands? Sent? And I guess there is a leaderboard for super mega nerds to compete. <laughs> Your score, 44979. Wow. Okay. Some people are going hard. Awesome. Okay. Anyway, how do I get out of here? No. Yes. Optionally upload your Python script for leaderboard, allowing other players to download your solutions directly. How do I get out of here? Oh, there we go. Next. All right, guys. I think we are going to wrap up this first look here at the joy of programming. I hope you absolutely loved it so far. I'm sorry for my terrible, terrible Python coding, but um, I don't know. It's fun. If you guys like coding and you want to learn a little bit more, I would highly recommend this game. It seems pretty good. But anyway, we just took a quick sneak peek at it here. That's going to wrap it up for today, guys. I hope you loved it. If you did, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up on this video. Subscribe to my channel if you're new here, and I will see you next time.